All righty. The day is here. Got my new M1A loaded scout squad. It is the NBS exclusive. And it comes with a 20 round magazine and a 15 round magazine. Or depending on your state, it comes with like two 10 rounders. Okay. Shooting some Winchester M80 ball. You got on your earplugs. Okay. We're at 50 yards now. We sighted him in at, at 10. All right. several rounds out of the old scout squad I can't remember how many I loaded <laughs> but it was with uh, Winchester M80 ball 149 grain 762 by 51 full metal jacket so we'll go down and see what he did at 50 man I love this thing already <laughs> all right got my M1A Again, my new M1A, running some uh, privy partisan 165 grain, oh, wait, no, these are 150 grain, my bad, 150 grain uh, pointed soft points, I believe that's what they are. All right, she's on fire. <clears throat>
All right. That's the shells out of the 15 rounder. You want to give it a go? Yeah, put me in about five of them uh, first ones you shot. These uh, M80 balls. Which orange you shoot at? The bottom one. Here, I'll put it on safe. There you go. Just come over here and let the boat go home and I'll keep on fire. You just push that lever in front of the trigger forward and it's on fire. Yep. All right. That was it. Sweet. All right. Well, as you all saw, and as I said in the range video for this outfit, I'm trying to make it all one big video. I haven't edited anything yet, but um, I'm at the other place. I got back a few hours ago and uh, me and my dad went and sighted this new bad boy in. This is uh, the M1A Scout Squad NBS exclusive model and it comes from the factory in flat dark earth. I've got my little lantern over there in the corner behind my TV because the lamp behind my TV uh, the bulb in it busted out and I'm wanting to get this uh, filmed and uh, because if I sit down or lay down in my bed, hmm. that, that, that'll be where where I end up. That's how I usually am when it's uh, overtime. I just sit down; it's game over. I won't, and then I'll, you know, be too tired to upload. But anyway, uh, we sighted him in. He uh, he shot really, really damn good. This is a fine rifle. Uh, it is really well put together. Springfield really did um, did their thing with it. I mean, look at this up here at the stock ferrule on this bad boy. <clears throat> no wiggle. That is tight. That is tighter than what's on my loaded. And this dude, at the accuracy, the results showed when we finally got the irons squared up back here and uh, got it shooting out at 50. I put three bullets basically in one square at a, at 50 yards. Uh, but this dude is a custom exclusive M1A from uh, Springfield Armory. 
it uh, come flat dark earth uh, Springfield does offer another scout squad in flat dark earth with the flat dark earth uh, stock but this one the receiver is actually Cerakoted you can see here it is flat dark earth from the factory Cerakoted I mean the knobs and the aperture aren't and the front side isn't as well but that's to be expected you kinda don't really want to paint over on them but the barrel the gas tube the gas block the and the receiver are all Cerakoted and flat dark earth. Mine came with the sling. It came with this GI sling. I've probably got it on wrong. It's kind of rudimentary. And it came with a carry ca uh, carry pouch. Let me get the pouch up here and let me show it to you all. It came with this custom carry pouch here. And a free patch. It says M1A Springfield Armory on it. This thing is designed to for specifically for the M1A Scout Squad. Let me set my rifle up over here so I can bring this up and let y'all see it better. It's designed specifically for a M1A Scout Squad. So you can see the inside there is uh, lengthed out to a. M1A Scout Squad. You would not be able to put a loaded model in this, and then it's got an area in the side for uh, it's like a plastic sleeve. Let me turn it around. It's got a plastic sleeve here for documents, stuff. I got my target that I used to uh, that I shot today with it. I'll get that out here in a minute. And this pouch out here has an area so you can unzip it and you can keep your other M1A mags in there. I've got two 20 rounders. It came with this one here, this black one, and it came with a 15 rounder as well. Uh, on Springfield's website it said it come with a 10 rounder and I was not expecting to get a 15 rounder so now I've got a 15 rounder and uh, a free 20 rounder that came with it. The one I've currently got in the rifle is one of my surplus uh, Winchester mag magazines. Uh, 20 rounds. Up. See, it's got a little W. Uh, yeah, right there you can see it. A little W. I'm trying to get the camera to focus. There we go, yeah. So, I've got three. 20 rounders up here. I also ordered some more Checkmate 20 rounders for it because I knew it would come with that uh, 20 rounder from the factory but I ordered three more out in the parking lot. I, I came home early from work the other day. Uh, well I didn't really come home early. I just sat in the parking lot waiting for my sister and her boyfriend to get done because they work up there now too. And ordered uh, two 20 round Checkmate mags for the M1A. And uh, we got some of this uh, Winchester 7.62 by 51 M80 ball. I was shooting this earlier. I got two boxes of this in there because it really, really liked that stuff. It surprised me. But yes, uh, for for a distributor exclusive from NBS Na Best uh, or Nation's Best Sports, I believe it's what it's called. Uh, I saw this and I fell in love with it. Had to have it. I was, like I said, planning on getting the Bula, but with the way prices and stuff are going now, and gas, this one just seemed to be the better alternative. Um, it was not cheap. This one was about a hundred or so more dollars than what I paid for the M1A loaded, but it was worth it. <clears throat> Given the quality of it. Uh, I think the quality control has gotten a lot better because this is a lot tighter. Everything, the fit and finish on this one is, uh, I will say, better than my loaded. My loaded is pretty good, pretty well put together, but uh, this one's just rugged. It's got like a solid feel to it. So uh, it performed very well out at 50 yards. We didn't take it out to 100 today. Uh, didn't want to burn through too much ammo. 
I ran about 30 rounds to this thing, maybe more, maybe 40, 60 maybe. I don't I put a lot of brass there. And they'll bring the target out. Uh, now keep in mind that the sights were kind of playing a trick on us there at 50 yards. We would go from 10 yards to 50 because we had to, we thought we had it sighted in to where, you know, it would hit on target at uh, 50 yards, but it turns out it was hitting too low. So we had to move the sight, we had to bring it back to 10 yards, see what was going on. Then we brought the sight, the rear aperture up, and then the groups improved. But uh, this is what it was doing at 10 yards here in the middle. And then this is what it was doing at 50. Got two in one hole there. We got some flyers that had to move the windage over to the right some more, bring it back over. We got two there. But I did those, those three there. I think my dad I may have done that one too, but these were my dad's. So we had to we had to play with the sights, the windage a little bit. And I think it did this at 50 yards as well with uh, PPU 150 grain uh, pointed soft point bullets. But yes, uh, this thing it shoots really, really damn good. Um, I just need to play with it some more. Uh, found a bullet that it likes to shoot, the Winchester 149 grain full metal jacket bullets, which I find interesting because those... I have to go back and watch the video, the ammo test I did with the loaded, but I don't think the loaded really cared for them. But the... Scout Squad loves them. It shoots them real damn good. Um, you know, it is M80 ball that I'd be shooting through that, so accuracy is kind of wonky, but uh, at 50 yards, this thing, it loved them. It's got the same twist rate as my loaded 1 and 11 twist. Same barrel twist, it's just a little shorter. But this thing, oh my goodness. <laughs> and uh, the muzzle brake. That is a must. That absolutely murders any upward rise that this rifle may have thought about having. I mean, this thing is flat. It, all it does when you fire, it just comes back. Oof, oof. Uh, un completely unloaded, it weighs 8 pounds. I mean, this thing is light as a feather. Just to be, it just a touch heavier than my uh, Black Rain Ordnance AR with nothing on it. But, uh, yeah, so I've got the new M1A guys, the new M14. I'm going to start customizing this like I have my uh, M70Z PEP. I do have a lot of things I plan to do with this bad boy. Uh, I'm going to get an AMS monolithic rail for it. I've uh, been looking into rails. was thinking about getting the Voltor, uh, but the Voltor, I was looking, and... The thing with the Voltor is it adds 13 ounces of weight to it. And I'm trying to keep this thing a little bit lighter than my loaded. Um, you know, going into the M1A, M14 game, you got to know right from the get-go that you're getting a beefy gun. So, you got to already have that in mind. But if you're going to customize one, this is what I've learned with my other one, if you're going to customize it, uh, just do everything you can. Pay attention to weight of attachments. And it's, yes, it's going to be a heavy rifle, but, you know, do what you can to not add more to it, you know. Um, but I'm going to get an AMS rail for it. The AMS rail comes from here. I'm going to get the extended one. The extended rail starts here and then goes down into the dovetail here where the stripper clip guide is. You just knock the stripper clip guide out and it pokes out, but it completely replaces the scout rail. You just take the existing scout rail off. You have to screw the Allen wrench keys to take it off. And then the bracket that's under the barrel, you leave that there and then put the AMS over the same, you know, screw holes. Screw it back down and then fit it into the dovetail down here in the receiver. And then you've got a, uh, basically a monolithic rail up on top that's got like several points of contact between the receiver and the barrel. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. I'm going to put some rails on the side. <coughs> 
the, the rest of those extended rails I got for the M70 for the M70's M walk can guard I'm going to drill and tap them into the stock here and then I'm going to plan on putting the Purst the green Purst 4 plus on this side and then get another uh, Surefire clone and put it over here on this side. I may get the IR capable one. I'm thinking about doing that. And then I've got a small pick rail I'm going to put right under here and then put an angled foregrip on this bad boy and then uh, go from there along with the other internal attachments. I'm going to put a National Match Sadlack guide rod in it as well. But right out the gate this thing was already breathing fire and the, the build quality, the lockup, the feel, nothing on this wiggles other than the swing. And the stock ferrule up here is tight, which is what you want on M14s. You don't want no wiggle up here. If it's got wiggle, you got to put shims in. That's all locked up good. The handguard and the stock don't move. I mean, it moves just ever so slightly, about a hair, but compared to my loaded, it's nothing. It's uh, night and day. And then, like, the handguard is locked in tight. This thing, they they went above and beyond with this rifle. And I'm just getting started. This was just the side end function test day, and it passed with flying colors. So stay tuned, guys. i got more coming. As time goes, this thing's going to get tricked out. We'll make it the uh, M14 version of what I've got going on with the M70. So stay tuned, guys. Catch y'all in the next video. Peace.